Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minds 365 for Demystify Microsoft Solutions for the MSP space. In today's video, I'm recovering all the pricing information for Windows 365, as well as giving you some recommendations on positioning this to your customers. Before I get into today's video, if you do want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Getting into it here though, I want to start off with pricing as Microsoft made this publicly available as of August 2nd. You'll notice here there's two major plans, the business plan and the enterprise plan, and they have various costs depending on the specs that you have on the left-hand side. The major thing you'll notice also is that there is this hybrid benefit for the business plan if you are running Windows 10 Pro as the operating system on the actual physical device. That is to say, if you're running this on a Chromebook, for instance, you're not going to be eligible for that hybrid benefit. The other major thing you'll notice is that the hyper benefit cost for business and the enterprise level pricing are the exact same. So with that, you want to fold in some of the technical considerations when you're thinking of comparing these two plans and leveraging this in a customer environment. First and foremost, lightweight deployment has a heavy asterisk next to it. When you think about the deployment here in Windows 365, it's much lighter than considering it against ABD, for instance but I consider the business plan the lightest deployment because all you have to do is actually assign a license to a user just like you would with a base level M365 plan that cloud PC provisions in about 30 minutes and you're up and going versus the enterprise plan which has a lot more prerequisites that you have to have in place as well as an Azure subscription and things of that nature. So that is just some of the considerations you wanna have when you go into this and thinking about the ease of use. The enterprise level plan supports custom images as well, whereas the business plan does not. The hybrid discount is available for the business level plan. Again, though, it is the same exact pricing as enterprise. So that one may not really matter to you at that point in time. There's auto resize capabilities available with enterprise natively within endpoint manager admin center whereas they are manual with the business level plan. That is not to say that you cannot do that. It is just simply a little bit harder of a process and there's potential for data loss and not being backed up to the cloud. Printer capabilities are limited with the business plan just simply because you don't have access to the network layer and it doesn't support newer technologies like universal print just yet. Whereas with the enterprise level plan, you do have access to all those capabilities. So your printer capabilities are a little bit more flexible. The Enterprise level plan does require an Azure subscription and it does require this hybrid connection with an on-prem Active Directory that could be local or could be spun up within Azure itself. But essentially they're, they're not supporting a full-on Azure AD deployment at this point in time. They do tout that they will do that in the future. Local admin support is native to the business plan whenever you provision a new cloud PC. Users are automatically local admins, whereas with the enterprise plan, obviously that requires some more manual configuration. Both of these plans do support a native MDM integration with Intune out of the box, which is really cool because then you can push out configuration profiles, scripts, applications, and compliance policies to devices as soon as they are provisioned. Other user considerations here, I feel like as an MSP, you already have ideas of what kind of user requires what kind of specs when you think about hardware provisioning or purchasing new physical devices. So this shouldn't be something that you necessarily have to reference, but I just wanted to provide it here. It's just straight from Microsoft, just showing what kinds of users would be most depth to the particular specs within Windows 365. Next here, some considerations between this solution and AVD. I'm not going to recreate this as Nerdio did a great job of depicting this as far as a decision flow for choosing one or the other and pricing information. So I'll link these resources below. My essential takeaway from this page though, if cost is a primary consideration, then you're likely to go with Azure Virtual Desktop. They showed this great comparison here where if you are leveraging pooled hosts, a auto scaling solution and reserved instances, you could leverage and save up to 58% over Windows 365. So it's a great comparison here and I highly implore you to go check out those resources. That's probably the best in the market today. Moving into the positioning here, if you think about the solution from a pricing standpoint, you compare it to a physical device of similar specs that you would get from an OEM provider like Dell, for instance, you're not gonna see much in the sense of cost savings when you think about that average lifetime being about three years. So pricing isn't really something that you should be going to market with when you think about positioning this to your customers. When you think about this, security, compliance, and flexibility is really the three major buckets that I would use to position this to my customers. 
And we'll be seeing more of that here on the final slide, which references common use cases here in three major buckets. Now, obviously these are just my common use cases that I thought of when thinking about the most benefit that you could use or when thinking about slowly rolling out the solution. You obviously though could have many more considerations depending on what you're doing within your practice. So first and foremost, obviously BYOD is a huge consideration here, probably one of the main drivers of why Microsoft created this solution in the first place. But essentially here it does provide a secure gateway to corporate resources. It allows for all that flexibility to work on any device anywhere without having to worry about a firewall or VPNing into a particular network or anything like that. It has this native integration with Intune so that you can push out the configuration profiles. You could push out your RMM tool, for instance. So there's a lot of flexibility there because of that native integration. Potentially, you could eliminate the shipping layer completely and maybe even stop interacting with OEMs you know, and not have to track these uh, shipments. You don't have to image the devices and you could potentially eliminate support altogether of that physical device. That's a harder conversation to have, I think, at this point in time. And it's not like you're going to stop eliminating device support completely when you think about all the appliances and, and things that you support within a company today. But you could begin to think about a hybrid deployment over time, where obviously some users are completely BYOD and use Windows 365 for those users, where some are still accessing the corporate network and using physical devices as well, too. You could also do a tiered rollout of Windows 365 where you slowly begin to decommission physical hardware and you stop supporting that and you move that user onto a Windows 365 deployment and you know you completely go cloud focused at that point in time. Lastly here you could also package this as a new service offering as an add-on potentially for the customers that want this type of flexibility but also still obviously maintain a physical device and access corporate data in traditional manners as well, while they slowly move to maybe this new, more modern solution. Secondly here, the RDS replacement is a heavy consideration obviously as well here too, where you think about moving away from legacy RDS models that Microsoft's provided in the past with Pro Plus and things of that nature, and you move into this as the new deployment, you potentially could save some costs or derive new efficiencies from this as well. And from there, you could also move off of third parties like Citrix, for instance, in lieu of this model where Citrix has provided a lot of headaches over time or other VDI providers that you may be using today. So switching costs might not be too high and you could actually save a lot of operational costs in the long term by moving to this solution. Obviously, though, you have to keep in mind the AVD considerations and the fact that Windows 365 only supports a single user session versus a pooled session. So AVD still might be a better consideration when you're thinking about shifting those workloads. Consulting is the final bucket here that I wanted to touch on because it's obviously a great solution for temporary access to corporate resources. You could spin up a cloud PC for a contractor, for instance, and then you could give them access to all the corporate data without having to think about the security and compliance concerns of them using a personal device to get on there that doesn't have your technology stack or solution stack on top of that device protecting everything and potentially compromising the customer's resources or data. So it's obviously giving them that temporary access that can be broken at any point in time whenever they leave. You can securely just deprovision that cloud PC, their access is removed, and there is great record keeping and audit trails for if they are within a compliance related practice like HIPAA or FINRA for instance as well too. So that's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys in today's video. If you do have anything as far as best practices or if you've been positioning this to your clients or have different ways of positioning this that you find helpful to share with the community, please comment that below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, if you do want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.